Mamá, ¿me haces un café? Sí, claro. Que me voy a Doha. Muy bien. Ahora mismo te hago un café. Que tengas buen viaje. Gracias. While I'm trying to get my gate for Doha, reacting quickly to uh, the news that uh, Luis Enrique is out, or oh. the Federation decided not to renew his contract. I think it was just the logical decision, not so much about the results, but uh, it just felt like their journey was over. Luis Enrique was offered to renew a few months back. He said, no, let's see on the World Cup. And it just felt like, even though Luis Enrique said, it'll be down to the president, it just felt like change was needed. I would have kept him, but I would have kept him telling him, what do I know, right? But telling him, how about it would change certain things There were a bunch of things that we didn't do that a competitive side has to do. And I'm sure that he's prepared it, but didn't come off on the pitch. We were consistent. Top of the uh, World Cup qualifying group, semi-finalists of the European Championships. And don't forget that against Italy in that semi-final, we were brilliant. And that's the thing about this side, that they were able to do against bigger sides a much better display than against Japan or Morocco. Why? Because the way they defend requires... Other things, very consistent on the edge of the box. Other things that we didn't offer. You know, we didn't shoot from outside the box. We were very good at set pieces. We couldn't put crosses in because there was nobody to finish them. A lot of the time, unless Morata was there, but that's not his main strength. We weren't very physical. We didn't move the ball fast enough. I know it's hard against 10 behind the ball, but uh, we didn't create high tempo. Uh, we didn't display well that style. And that's a fascinating thing. The question that we're all asking, and I'm asking myself, was it 2010? an exception to the rule. In World Cups, we've been failing since. Uh, we'd only beat Iran, Costa Rica and Australia. And uh, before that, it was the same. So what is it, the, the next move? Uh, with De La Fuente, the new manager, you're going to have continuation of the idea. But, you know, he's won things at, uh, with a lower rank, so he, he's a competitive coach. But what is he moving us towards? More of the same, but more layers? Or are we trying something different? With De La Fuente, we will have more of the same and more layers. It's the decision that the Federation has decided to do and I want to help with that debate by perhaps doing a talk in football that uh, deals with it. What is playing well and what do we have to do? There's no clear references now, there's no Johan Cruyff, we heard Jorge Baldano, Cruyff, uh, you know, and, and, and that side of things for a long while and that took us to win, to winning a World Cup, two European Championships. But where are we now? Um, where are we now and what is football now? And I've been an advocate of that style, I just wonder if you need to show more layers of that style be stronger physically, be faster, uh, other things that uh, perhaps we'd abandoned with a midfield that had Gabi, Pedri, Busquets. You couldn't do quick transitions there. The 50-50s, it was hard to, uh, to win a lot of battles. Leave all those questions there. But anyway, I've going, going through and... to get inside Doha having had the higher card that you need and all the documentation was properly presented on my first trip now it was just a matter of uh, scanning the passport and look my bag is here already let's stop for a coffee and let's uh, answer your questions what do you think hot karak is what I'm having which is like a chai latte right Right, here are the questions. Umair Khalid says, do you think successful club managers are viable in international football or does it require a different approach? Very interesting question. Because Luis Enrique tried to um, do things that he wouldn't do at club level, but others that he did, like the insistence on, on an idea and grow through that idea was perhaps something that you would do with time and when you're able to sign players, but when you're done, you have to realize what you've got and perhaps Uh, what we saw was that we don't have the players for the way which Luis Enrique wanted to play. And yes, he didn't add layers to the side because perhaps he thought with, with what he was doing was enough. And I, I insist on this. Spain was the most consistent side in the last two years in Europe. It's just that uh, come to the World Cup, we didn't show the bravery, we didn't show 
alternatives and all these things that I keep talking about. So at club level, you earn more money. That's one important thing. You have more time to influence things. That's another important thing. And at international level, you earn less. So you get a lot of managers that have been at the end of their careers or managers that are starting, not good or bad, but managers that haven't got the experience or that you will get at club level. Because really they don't have a lot of time to influence things. So they're not the best managers, but as I say, they just cannot do much with what they've got. So a lot of what happens in a World Cup has to do with the quality of the individual. Organizing a side, almost anybody can do that, especially defensively. Um, Spain tried something new, which was an organized attack. You can see that it requires much more time or the quality that we didn't have. So in a balance, players are more important than managers. Dinesh Rijal, who is a regular in these uh, videos and questions, uh, he says two questions. Are Argentina good enough to beat the Dutch? I love Argentina, but they don't fill me with confidence. Because you don't relate, uh, Dinesh, Argentina with playing well, but they are playing well. Playing well, what is that? I need to ask this question to more managers in the next few days. What is playing well? And it's maximizing your potential, uh, making sure that you're difficult to beat and that you have an extra thing that helps you win when, you, as a team, you cannot do that. Argentina have got all of that. Second question, should World Cup be treated as the trophy that defines a player's legacy? For example, the notion that Leo cannot be the greatest because Argentina didn't win the World Cup, should we question that? People tend to ignore what a mess Argentina have been all these years, uh, that Iwain missed a golden chance in the first half against uh, Germany, let me add, uh, with nil-nil still, and that Argentina just don't have the quality to win against Brazil or France or even Portugal and England. I think they have, but I know exactly what you're saying. It's impossible. This debate has got only one answer. People have decided that the World Cup is the one that produces the legacy because everybody's watching it, but it's seven games. It's a tournament that takes place in a month. I mean, Messi was um, in bad physical form in a lot of the World Cup, still managed to get to a World Cup final. But imagine this one, he, for whatever reason, he got injured and wasn't here. People would say, ah, he wasn't great. He wasn't as great as others. And how wrong would that be? For me, he was the greatest. Well, he's the greatest, of course. He's the greatest. Medvez says, for all credit Messi gets, does he get enough for what he's achieved with this very average Argentinian team? He has literally carried them since his debut and his performance at Copa was statistically the most dominant by an attacking player ever. I completely agree with that. Messi was been, has been outstanding. Against Australia was the best individual performance that we've seen in this World Cup. He's not really carrying the team. The team actually plays for his strengths. So Julian Alvarez does a lot of work without the ball and with the ball, stretching teams. Di Maria goes 1v1 and beats the teams a lot. The midfield has now got really good balance. Uh, I, I love Enzo Fernandez. I think he's going to be a great manager, a great manager, a great player. Uh, McAllister as well. Even the Paul now is, I'm, I'm growing to like him. And at the back, they they solid. So they play to his strengths. For him to actually be influential in the last third on the edge of the box, that's where Messi is right now is his best. And the team is is helping him with that. So. He's not doing it on his own. Aquasi Amanqua says, could Messi retire from football if he wins the World Cup? No, 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 he's got loads to do. As it stands at the moment, with Barcelona not offering anything, as I keep saying, he will renew his contract with PSG. That's the first choice, I think, right now. MLS can wait, and because he's going to go year by year when he feels that he's, his body doesn't give him any more, then he won't fight for more Champions League called Ballon d'Or. But right now, he's in that battle. A couple more. Saxon Bosworth says, Hi, Guillaume, been enjoying your analysis in Revista de la Liga. Thank you very much. I'd love to hear your perspective on the conversation around the Brazil celebration. Isn't that joyful life what's it all, what it's all about? Absolutely. Let them celebrate whatever way they want. I felt like a kid watching Brazil in the first half, especially against South Korea. It was wonderful. And the way of celebrating, the way of continuing that joy is dancing. Even the manager dance. Isn't that great? For Europeans mostly, not Africans, not Australians, even though that I don't mean European thinking maybe but um, Europeans are the one who moan a bit about that let them be Tita was very clever Chita the manager when he said I dance because that's how we communicate that I'm using their language to get close to them absolutely I wanted them to score more goals to celebrate because uh, that way because I knew it was going to hurt many <laughs> let them do that I leave it here I'm going to go home now and uh, coffee with Guillaume there'll be another one very soon bye bye